Alright, Shalom. This is Har one by Nyasha Allah of the Lions Den Camp. I want to say Kyle Halayim, La Yahawa, Bahashim Yahawashai, Bahashim Harukar Kodash, Ma'amah, double honor to the elder apostles of GMS and their elders. Shalom to you, Akim and Agwati, my children, that believe in sincerity and truth around the four corners of the earth. Uh, yeah, man, what you see, or what you saw in the um, video, was it said a million people. Over a million people um, praising the name uh, Jesus. All right. So <clears throat> I don't know. I was just showing that to my children earlier. And I was like, yo, um, just look what we're up against. You know, when we go out and teach and we try to warn our people and wake them up to the truth in the true name of Yahweh Shai, right, which is the true name of the Messiah. Um, this is part of what, what we're up against. All of those people. And that's just one area, man, like a little concert or something. And whoever had that concert, they made a lot of money that day, uh, most likely. Um, but I want to read these scriptures, man. So I'm going to let the scriptures speak, the spirit of Yahweh Shah uh, speak. All right, because Jesus is not the Lord's name. So all of those people out there screaming to that name, praying to that Edomite image of Cesare Borgia, the son of the sixth Pope of Rome. And Christos going back to Zeus, right? Or Olympus. All basically planet worship. The worship of the planet Jupiter. Um, and that's what uh, two-thirds of our people are into. That may have been, part of our people are mingled up in that crowd. I don't know if they was over there in, uh, with them Hamites, them Africans. Or if there was uh, a lot of Jake. It looked like a lot of Jake. All right, Israelites. <laughs> so they were, um, you know, it's just a lot of people, man. And the scriptures speak about that, man, how the way to destruction is a wide road, you know. And the way to the kingdom is narrow. And I'm going to get those scriptures. But this is Amos 5 and 18. Woe unto you that desire the day of Yahweh. To what end is it for you? The day of Yahweh is darkness and not light. All right, so all of those people, a lot of them are going to be destroyed, man, or put in the, or put in the chains someday, you know, when the Lord shows up. Because it says, um, you know, that was overseas. But then in America, those people are not going to make it. All right, the Lord is going to destroy them in the judgment. And that's a lot of people. And that shows you, gives you a, um, a, a visual of all the people that's on the earth worshiping idols man it looked like everybody standing in the damn fire man all right where they was all screaming still look creepy um but it's all paganism all right so it says what woe unto them that desire the day of the lord so they're desiring for the lord to show up but they're they're ignorant to who he is all right and they're not called. All right, they're basically worshiping uh, idols. They're worshiping pagan uh, idols, man, mythology. All right, so he says, to what end is it for you? Right, because their, their end is going to be destruction because they're not uh, honoring what? Yahweh Shah. They're not praising him, worshiping him. This is Psalms 2 and 11. Uh, served, serve Yahweh by Shemiah with shy with fear and rejoice with, with trembling. All right, so how do you serve the Lord? By keeping the law, statu statutes, and commandments to the best of your ability uh, and going out to the highways and byways. And that's how we show our worship today in praise and in prayer, right? And in word, man. And, all right, 
So that's how you praise today. That's how you worship today. All right. And and um, same thing as what? The work. Same word. So doing the work. All right. It says what? Kiss the son, lest he be angry and ye perish from the way. All right. Kiss means what? To honor him and to worship him. Worship Yahweh Shai. But uh, they're doing it incorrectly. Uh, changing his name from Hebrew to Greek, or Latin, or Aramaic, Akkadian, all these different um, heathenistic uh, uh, languages, you know, and phonetic speakings, then they're what? They're uh, perverting his name, all right? Dishonoring his name. When his wrath is kindled but a little, so you kindle the Lord's wrath, you perish from the way. All right, and uh, you'll be led into that wide uh, way, which is le led to destruction. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. This is John 4 and 23. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, man. So that's how you worship him, in spirit and in truth. All right, so you got to find the truth, man. Not going out just yelling out anything. Say, it don't matter. He got many names. No, he says he got, his name is what? He got one name. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh is not a spirit. Right? Yahweh is not a spirit that, and and they that worship, it's just like, Yahweh is a spirit, and they that worship him, must worship him in spirit and in truth. And those people are not worshiping the Lord in spirit and in truth. It don't matter what they're doing, hooting and hollering, shaking, doing that paganistic um, Christian uh, uh, shake doctrine where they go up and shake and hooting and hollering. Right? And screaming and crying. Uh, all of that was pushed by Esau. In the, uh, from the 16 to the 1800s, 1900s, they were pushing that 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 uh, pagan uh, demonic doctrines where they call demons on themselves, speaking in call what they call speaking in tongues. But speaking in tongues, tongues just mean what languages. So if you speak in that Hebrew language, that's what you're supposed to pray in the Hebrew. Then you're supposed to be able to interpret what you're saying. All right, and you pray in the English, the language that you speak. But when it comes to his name, you translate it just like in the uh, the Dead Sea Scrolls. Uh, they have it in what? They have it in Aramaic. Uh, Yahweh. They have they have his name in uh, Greek. All right, and then they have it in the Paleo Hebrew, the Lashawan Kodash, and that's the original name. So when it so when it when it comes up to his name, everything's in Greek. But when it comes up to the Lord's name, it's in uh, Paleo Ancient Hebrew. All right, the Proto Hebrew, which it means first Hebrew, where you find his name is Yahweh, and his son name is in the same Hebrew, Yahweh Shai. And that's the name you need, and the truth that's tied to that name, prophecies as well. All right, law, statutes, and commandments. Um, that's what you need to be delivered. That's who you need. All right, but you got to do it in spirit and in truth, not going out there just uh, manifest destiny, screaming, and all that shit. This is uh, Ecclesiasticus, Sirach, 17 and 9. He gave them to glory in his marvelous acts forever. All right. Uh, that they might declare his works with understanding. And he was talking about the elect. And this was uh, 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 Sirach uh, passed this book down to his son, Yahweh or um, from his grandfather, uh, Yahweh Shai, all right, which in the English would be Joshua, so, and they, you know, you know what I'm saying. Like in the Greek, they try to they try to change it and put the or the wrong, or they put the name Jesus, which means Hail Zeus, giving paying homage to their pagan idol Zeus, who was popular during the time a popular idol that people that these idiots was worship worshiping wickedly during the Greek and Roman Empire. 
All right. Um, it says what? They're going to declare his works with understanding. So you're going to understand the truth. And the elect shall praise his holy name. So what the word holy means to be separated. All right. So this is a name that's separated for what? Deliverance. Separated for salvation. All right. Even though there's people on the name on the earth whose name was Yahweh Shai or Joshua or Yahweh Shai. Um, that's the name that the Lord chose that spirit to be in the end times to deliver the children of Israel from bondage into uh, the kingdom. This is Acts, <clears throat> Acts 4 and 10. Be it known unto you all and to all the people of who? Israel. See that? So it's talking to who? All the people of Israel. So when it says Jews and Gentiles, it's talking about uh, Israelites that knew they were Jews, you know, that knew they were Israelites. And you had um, uh, Israelites that didn't know they were Israelites, that called themselves Greeks, and, and you know, and so on and so on. So they were called Gentiles. That by the name of Yahweh Shai of Nazareth, see it says Jesus Christos, but Jesus literally means Hail Zeus, man. And Christos is a pagan term as well. But they say that it means anointed in Greek. All right. But these languages upon this earth are vanity. So if you look at it in that way, it's all heathenistic, period, man. It's all wicked. So the true language spoken by Adam, spoken by Eber, right? Spoken by Abraham and Shem, all right? And Seth are facts at it. All right, so Noah, you know, Jacob, name was changed to Israel, all up to Peter and Paul, they was all speaking true Hebrew, man. The book, they have, you have scriptures in the Bible, the book of Hebrews, all right, the letter to the Hebrews, man. And Paul was speaking Hebrew in the scriptures a few times to the, to the uh, Hebrews. So it says what? Verse 11, Acts 4 and 11, or 10. It says, by the name of Yahweh Shai, that's what it's supposed to say. Yahweh Shai, meaning he deliverer. All right. And uh, Mashiach, <clears throat> Mashiach meaning anointed. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. Of Nazareth, um, whom ye crucified. All right, that's when the, uh, the Romans were doing crucifixion all up until Constantine, where they changed it over to uh, hanging, all right? Whom Yahweh raised from the dead. So uh, Yahweh Shah was the first uh, one to be glorified all right, out of the children of Israel. Even by him uh, doeth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved, right? And that name, Jesus, which would be before that, it was called what? Lesus or Isus. And they elongated the J during the 1600s, 16th century in Rome around the Renaissance period with Cesare Borgia and them damn heathens, the Borgia family. <clears throat> they were doing iconoclasm, taking down our pictures, putting theirs up. All right. <laughs> um, so it says, neither is there salvation in any other. All right. And we're in the time of salvation. We're in the time of deliverance, repentance. So if you were going to repent that he's the way, that's the only way, is through him and his name and uh, and uh, following him, Yahweh Shai, all right, in truth and in spirit. In spirit moves, it's a moving, a moving, um, uh, uh, you know, power, all right? So you're going to be doing the work. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby... We must be saved. So there's no other name under heaven given that the Lord chose whereby we might we must be saved. He chose the name Yahweh Shai. All right, for for um our Messiah to be called. 
right? They ask his name in the beginning, and he'll say, "Why you ask my name?" You know, he, he he's not going to give his name. But when he was born with Joseph and Mary, uh, he was given the name Yahweh Shai. All right. I mean, he's the deliverer, that spirit right there. He's the one that's chosen to do it. And the proof was the, the miracles and the prophecies that he played out and acted out upon the earth and the message that he taught from the Father. All right, and all the prophecies. So, all right. Um, so it says, Neither is there salvation in any other name, and there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And the damn sure ain't no Jesus, which came uh, later on, all right, during the 1600s. It's a modern name. And during a time where it was popular to put S-U-S or S-O-U-S or S-O-S at the end of uh, uh, people's name, which was giving homage to Zeus. They even named some uh, some lands after it. They had lands that had S-U-S at the end of it. All right. Um, all right. This is uh, the prologue of Sirach. Uh, which was written around 246 uh, BC um, during the time of uh, the Greeks uh, uh, Empire transitioning over to what the Roman Empire all right and um, and we had to uh, uh, speaking what we had to keep on hold on to that Hebrew language all right uh, anyway I'm gonna keep going Sirach uh, prologue it says where am I at it says for the same things uttered in Hebrew and translated into another tongue have not the same force in them right and not only these things but the law itself and the prophets and the rest of the books have no small difference when they are spoken in their own language alright so once you speak them, speak these scriptures and break them down and translate them back into the original um, language you get more understanding of the um the word all right of his message all right this is philippians 2 and 11 and that every tongue should confess all right um uh, no so lucky uh two and uh nine wherefore yahweh have also have ex highly exalted him and giving him a name which is above every name. Whew, even in the heaven and upon the earth. All right. That at the name of Yahweh Shai. All right. Right there they have Jesus. But I'm, I'm going to translate it for you in a second. All right. At the name of Yahweh Shai. Every knee should bow. And they, those people. That crowd of people not bowing to the name of Yahweh Shai. They bowing to Jesus. They bowing to an idol uh, God, man. All right, a, a mythology, a myth. All right, every a paganism. All right, they bow to the devil, basically. It says every knee should bow of things in heaven, the angels, and things in earth, and things under the earth. All right, and th and that not that there's a place where people spirits are under the earth. It's talking about you have people in the oceans, you have um, people uh, working under the earth. All right, and that every tongue should confess that Yahweh Shai is Lord to the glory of Yahweh the Father. So to, to so to honor the Father, you got to honor His Son in truth. See that? So to worship the Father, you got to deal with Him what in spirit and the truth. And in dealing with His Son, you have to deal with Him in spirit and the truth. All right. This is First uh, John five and nine. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of Yahweh is greater. For this is the witness of Yahweh, which he have testified of his son. He that believeth on the son of Yahweh hath the witness in himself, by the spirit of truth. He that believeth not Yahweh have, not, uh, have made him a liar. So you're not worshiping him. And you're not following the father in spirit and truth. Because he believeth not the record that Yahweh gave of his son. All right, and this is the record that Yahweh have given to us, 
eternal life. And this life is in his son. He that hath the son have life, and he that have not the son have not life, man. So you have not the truth dwelling in you. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the son of Yahweh, all right? That ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of Yahweh, the son of Yahweh, all right? So, um... And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us, all right, according to his name, according to his will. So he said, uh, the record that uh, he gave of his son and on his name, man, and his name was given in what? In the truth. All right, Isaiah 8 and 20. And it's the same thing that Paul said. He said he came to bear the testimony as the name of Yahweh Shai and the will of Yahweh through Yahweh Shai, all right? And how he was raised from the dead. Isaiah 8 and 20. To the law and to the testimony. Same thing it said in the prologue of Sirach. All right. The prophets and the laws had no small difference. What? If they speak not. A, uh, well, they spoke in a different language. But check this out. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them, man. Meaning they what? They have darkness in them. So that whole crowd is full of darkness. All those people praising that name, Jesus, um, on this Christmas folly day, they're um, in darkness, man. All right? And the day is about to shine. You see that? Yahweh Shai, the lion, the true um, lion of the tribe of Judah, Yahawada in Hebrew. Hebrew. Um, he's about to show up. All right, I'm going to translate this, man. This is uh, Jesus. Uh, I was doing it in Philippians. All right, if you click on it in the lexicon, you go to the lexicon, and it's uh, Strong's 2424, so 2424. All right, and then you want to go to the Greek, and in the Greek, you'll find the name uh, Jesus goes back to Lesus. See that? So it, Jesus don't even... In, J-E-S-U-S -S doesn't even exist. It's vanity, man. It's man's imagination. All right? If you trace it back before the 1600s, you got books that don't even have the letter J in it. King James Bible. Got one right next to me. Um, But you trace it back, it says Jehoshua, which would be what? Joshua. It says the name of our Lord and two or three other Israelites. All right? So let's look that up. Uh, Jehoshua. So in the Hebrew, in the Old Testament, you will find what? Joshua. All right, so let's find that. And the letter J never existed, so how could it be Joshua? Let's, let's get into that real quick. All right, now this was Joshua, Ephraimite. Um, and he was the son of Nun, all right? Now, uh, his, his, if you click on his name, in the uh, Hebrew Old Testament, it says what? Uh, Yahweh Shai. All right. Of course, we don't we don't deal with the Yiddish. The Yiddish is modernized, a uh, gumbo of Slavic and German languages. It's not even pure Hebrew. It's it's, it's a, um, a heathenistic language, man. So his, his name would be Yahweh not Jehoshua, not Joshua, not Yahshua, not Yahweh, none of that. The, the, the father's name is Yahweh, meaning he exists. And Yahweh Shai is the son, all right? S O N, all right? Yahweh Shai. And uh, his name means he delivers, all right? He's the, 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 he delivers. So he's the spirit that's chosen to deliver the children of Israel, all right? in these last days and he had to act out those prophecies to signify that all right and he came down here and he lived it out and he um was magnified in the heavens and even the angels in heaven bowed to his name as they will upon earth all right but his name is going to be given to the elect first all right i'm gonna read this again so rock 17 and 10 and the elect shall praise his holy name right in these times all right, now check this out. 
This is John 17 and 6. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gave, gavest me out of the world. Thine they are, and thou hast gavest them to me, and they have kept thy word. And who is that? This is Revelation 7 and 4. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed in hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of Israel, all right, and also the uh, small multitude. This is uh, Second Ezra 2 and 20, uh, 46. Then said I unto the angel, What young person is it that crowneth them and giveth them palms? That's lucky. 44. So I asked the angel and said, Sir, what are these? He answered and said unto me, These be they that have put off the mortal clothing. So the mortal clothing represent these bodies. So in the once you get delivered, you'll be um, with Yahweh Shai, and you'll have your new, the second covenant, which is the new bodies, and the law is written in your inward parts, and you'll put off this mortal uh, flesh, and you'll put on immortality and live forever. All right, and the Lord's not going to give that to everybody. There's a, there's an elect process, all the way to the first fruits, Yahweh Shai first, the first, and then the first uh, part, the the beginning of the first fruits, and then. Uh, the rest of Israel afterwards, all right, being born back into the kingdom. So it says, He answered and said unto me, These be they that have put off the mortal clothing and put on the immortal and have confessed the name of Yahweh. So he confessed his name, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right, Yahweh Shai is a power as well. And now are they crowned and received palms. Then said I unto the angel, What young person is it that crowneth them? And giveth them palms in their hands. So he answered and said unto me, It is the son of Yahweh, whom they have confessed in the world. So you gotta confess his name, man. Then began I greatly to commend them that stood so stiffly for the name of Yahweh Bashim El Shah. Alright, so once you know his name, you gotta stand for his name. Alright, and, and stand the way he did it, in spirit and in truth. Alright. Def defending his name uh, spiritually because he's a spirit. All right, I got see, I got these, um, <clears throat> you know, these, uh, um, what, what would you call this, man? Um, this uh, literature, all right, online, and it's information from research and uh, other uh, professors and uh, authors that have written about the name of Jesus being tied to the name of Zeus and they know all right and uh but they still got the name wrong they call him Yeshua and all that but you still got to trace it back to the proto-hebrew the word proto means what first all right first hebrew so before all right and it was later changed to paleo meaning ancient hebrew paleo uh, during the eighth century bc all right that's when they changed it Teague left P. Lesser. Well, he separated and called one Akkadian script. He changed it from Akkadian to um, Aramaic, paying homage to Aram. And then he transitioned, changed it uh, from uh, Proto Hebrew or Shemitic Hebrew and changed it to um, uh, what would you call uh, Paleo Hebrew, call it Ancient Hebrew. All right. And then later they changed it during the Greeks. Now, Alexander time, we called it, started calling us Phoenicians. Anybody from that area of the Levant, they started calling us Phoenicians. So the original language is Proto-Hebrew, man, which is, goes back to Paleo, uh, Lashawan Kodash, meaning the holy tongue. All right. And Paleo just means ancient. So right here it says, what, early Christos pagan synchronize Greek culture into Greek Christianity, which smoothed the way for Christo paganism to become the state religion. And the name Jesus, oh, is the name Jesus holy? They, the Greek, the Greco-Roman world had worshiped Zeus as the supreme deity. Their savior was Zeus. That's what they, that's what they believed. So now they were ready to accept uh, Yahweh as Jesus, 
Le Zeus, meaning Hail Zeus. <laughs> now are translated, now are tra are translated, our translated scriptures say that Yahweh's son name is Jesus, which is a compound word made up of Le and Zeus. Hail Zeus, the origin of Christianity by A.B. Trainer. Let me go to another one. It says, uh, it says, it is simple, simply amazing to think that all these years, hundreds of years, mankind has been calling the, the Savior by the wrong name. <laughs> it's hard to give up the name Jesus because it's so deeply ingrained in uh, us, meaning Americans. It says us. Uh, and much has been said and done in that name. Gospel of the Kingdom, True Names and Title, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, 1931, Ohio, USA. All right, so I can go on and on, man, but I'm going to read one more. Uh, Zeus was one of the most popular gods or idols at that time. And conjecture has it that perhaps Jesus was name was changed to please the pagans in the empire who were reluctant to accept the new faith of the roman empire look at some of the findings it is known that the greek name endings with sus seus sous were attached by the greeks to names uh and geographical areas like just like i said earlier as, as means to give honor to the supreme deity, Zeus. Dictionary of Christian Lore and Legend, Professor J.C.J. J. Metford, all right? So you can go on and on, man. So there's a lot of proof out there. So these people are going to have no excuse in that day. All right, so, um, you know, I just proved it that his name is Yahweh Shai, man. And, um, and, of course, all the brothers are proving it, the apostles proving it. And, um... Yeah, right. You see all those people that's going down that wide, wide way to uh to destruction. All right, so that's why the Lord said it, man. The the uh, the harvest is plenty, but the workers are few. All right, Romans ten and ten. For with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. So you have to first believe that he is. You have to believe in in him in spirit and the truth, in your mind first. And then what? And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. All right. So you have to confess his name all right, to be saved and delivered. For the scriptures say, if whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. So if you know you're Israelite and you, um, you've been calling on the wrong name this whole time, but you call yourself keeping the laws, then you represent the Jew. But um, but you had to believe righteously, you know. You had to believe in Yahweh Shai, in the truth, in the prophecies. That's how you deliver, it, not by you keeping the laws perfectly. All right. Um, and the Greek meaning what? Um, a, a pagan meaning Israelites that are in the pagan mindset all around the world today. They can repent. All right. Uh, only Israelites. They can repent. Uh, to Yahweh Shai and be delivered and be forgiven. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. All right. And he's rich unto who? The children of Israel. According to Revelation 2 and 9. Um, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So that if you want to be saved or delivered, you have to be able to call on his name. Um. And scriptures speak about Esau that they have no place of repentance. So this, they're not these heathens aren't included in that. All right, they're not included in that one forty four, and the one third. Romans ten and fourteen. How then shall they call on him whom they have not believed? So that whole crowd of people they don't believe in the truth. They don't believe in Yahweh Shai. They don't believe in Yahweh. They don't even believe in his color that he's a so called black man. From the tribe of Judah. All right. And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? 
And how shall they hear without a preacher? All right, so these preachers are leading people um, down the wrong path. All right. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who have believed our report? All right. So then faith, so to have so to even to even have faith in Yahweh Shah, you have to what? Study to show yourself approved. Right? Reve um, Revelations 1 and 3. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, because the times are at hand. So you have to be taught. So you have to catch up, watch the brothers and apostles uh, videos. You have to um, listen to a camp that's teaching. And then you become a teacher as well. All right, once you grow in the truth, not being a novice, uh, lifted up. All right, jumping out there too early and spewing out all kind of um, uh, falsehoods. All right, building building upon the foundation that Yahweh shy falsely, and that you can get destroyed for that as well. All right, you had to learn how to be brotherly, being in the spirit of Yahweh shy. Matthew six and five, and when thou prayest. Thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. All right, that was their reward right there, all them people gathering. That was it, just that emotional moment that they got a bunch of tears and giving up their money to that pastor, that, you know, the wolf in sheep's clothing. Tearing them from their tearing them from their salvation. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when th um, thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father, which is in secret, and thy father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. So they, when they say, he's coming in a Hyundai and speaking in tongues, right? Hum -da -hum -da -hum -da -hum -da. And shaking and hooting and hollering. And that's shaking. They started that um, around the 1700s, 1800s. All right, pushing that paganism. That's a pagan, uh, um, that they put a uh, pagan mindset or a ritual that they pushed on our people in slavery. All right. You can look it up, man. They call it shaking. A shaking ministry and it was like literally shaking demons on themselves man uh anyway so let me keep going all right so all everything they were doing is in is vanity but to, he said what well, you got to pray pray to pray to the father in spirit and in truth but you got to do it through who your house shy you got to pray through your house shy all right, when you pray, you do it in privacy. In, uh, uh, what do you call that? Um, solemn, all right? You know, in solidarity. Um, solitude, so like it. All right, in solitude. So you're supposed to do it when you're alone or amongst the brothers or when you're amongst your family, all right? Or you're out by the water, things like that. That's when you talk to the Lord in prayer. In your inner man, in your soul, in your spirit. Um, so that's what Yahweh Shai said. And to deal with him, you got to deal with prophecy and you got to deal with the truth. Check this out. And to worship Yahweh, you got to deal with him in spirit and in truth. Remember that. And Yahweh Shai said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So if you don't have Yahweh Shai and the truth, you don't have life. Remember that in Isaiah. If they don't speak according to this word, according to Yahweh Shai, they don't have the truth in them. They don't have the, they're not of Yahweh Shai. They're not of that light. They're of darkness. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So the spirit of truth, to deal with Yahweh in the truth, you have to deal with Yahweh Shai in the truth. Believe that he came in what? In the flesh. All right? And um and that he was raised from the dead and he's up in the heavens now and that he's a so-called black man you have to you have to tell the truth man he's from the tribe of judah a so-called negro if ye had known me ye should have known my father also and from henceforth ye know him 
and have seen him, right? Because Yahweh looks just like Yahweh. Yahweh child looks just like Yahweh. All right. According to the book of Daniel. This is Revelations 1 and 13. Actually, uh, Revelations 1 and 1. The revelation of Yahweh Shai. Revelation means what? Revealing of Yahweh Shai. Mashiach, which Yahweh Shai, meaning he's the deliverer and the anointed one. All right. The son of Joseph and Mary. It says, uh, which Yahweh gave unto him. To, he gave this revelation to John to show unto his, or to Yahweh Shai, to show unto his servants, which must, which things um, must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, all right, who bear record of the word of Yahweh and of the testimony of Yahweh Shai, of Mashiach, and of all things that he saw, all right. So, Everything that he saw, man. So this is what he saw. And in the verse 13, and in, in the midst of the seven candlesticks, the seven churches of Asia Minor, and the seven angels over those areas, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and it girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs, meaning his, his facial hairs and the top of his head, were white and woolly, as white as snow, right? When he was on the earth, he had dark hair. When in the heavens, he had that uh, white and woolly hair. All right. Uh, could it have been turning white and gray when he was on the earth? Yeah, but who cares? All right. Uh, but he wasn't a baby having white and woolly hair. You know what I'm saying? As white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. His feet like unto brad, fine brass, I mean a dark brown, as if it's burned in a furnace. And his voice as the sound of many waters. So he had shiny, dark brown feet. All right. Uh, glowing skin, man, because he, he was given his new body. All right. So, um, and he had in his right hand seven stars, the angels. And out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. And his countenance was at the sun shining in his strength, man. All right. And the scriptures say that he's going to be glowing. Daniel 12 and 3. And they that shall, they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. And we're going to shine in that same way as Yahweh Shai. All right. First John 3 and 1. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, man. So that would, through this lesson, that's what I hope the edification will be. Or the revealing will be that you, um, uh, behold what manner of love and order and, and uh, care that the Father, Yahweh, have bestowed upon us by giving us Yahweh Shai and the truth that we should be called the sons of Yahweh, right? By him putting his spirit within us, the spirit of truth, according to Galatians chapter uh, 4, I think it is. Therefore, the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of Yahweh. And it doeth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that, see, we know through the scriptures, we have an unction to know all things, right, according to his will. When he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purify himself, even as he is pure. All right? So, um, by that time, we're going to be what? In them new bodies, man. All right? You'll be looking right at him. And you, you're going to be as he is, man. Glorified and glowing and shining. If you believe in the truth of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai and his true name. Matthew 7 and 13. Enter ye in at the straight gate, right? And the straight gate is to go through the affliction and through this path where one has to walk through at a time, meaning... Uh, working out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And fear meaning um, adhering to your Bashim Yahweh Shai and wisdom. To fear the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All right. And trembling meaning being in his presence. All right. Being in his, under his shadow and trusting him. All right. Matthew 7 and 13. Enter ye in at the straight gate. Enter into what? His rest. Into this work. The righteous way, man. Follow the footsteps. Of Yahweh Shai. And to do that, we're going to go through infliction.
in adversity. For wide is the gate. All right? <clears throat> That's all the people you saw praising and screaming. That's a wide gate. And broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in there at, right? Because the scriptures say, can the blind lead the blind? Yes, right into a ditch. And that ditch is a wide ditch, man. All right, it's going to uh, help. Uh, destruction is going to open his mouth unto these people. All right. Because straight is the gate. All right. And, and, and straights represent affliction. And narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it, man. So it's going to be few. All right. Beware of false prophets which come unto you in sheep's clothing. But inwardly they are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. So these 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 people, their fruit, their wisdom is of um, of evil, man. It's bad. It's of wickedness. It's of the left hand side, lies and hypocrisies and deception. Right, that's, what, that's what fruit represents, the wisdom. So their wisdom is of the world, all right? not of Yahweh, by Hashem El Shai. This is uh, 1 Corinthians 1 and 20. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Have not Yahweh made foolishness, foolish, the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, the world by wisdom, see, that's where he blocked them at, Romans 11, knew not Yahweh. It pleased Yahweh by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe, man. So that's why we go through this process. The Lord said it uh, through the foolishness of preaching, that's the way he chose for us to be saved, all right, that if we believe. All right, because if you predestined to believe, then that's just it, man. The most high gonna get his elect, Romans 3 and 3. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of Yahweh without effect? God forbid. Yea, let Yahweh be true, but every man is a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings and mightest overcome when thou art judged, man. All right. Right, that's why he says about confession, man, the testimony. Um, Matthews 12 and 34. Oh, ye, oh, generation of vipers. All right. Uh, I'm going to start from here so I can get to the point. Oh, generation of vipers, how can ye being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh, man. See, out of the mind, there it goes again. And the mouth speaketh unto what? Confession to salvation. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things. All right. So what, you know, do men grab the figs of thistles? All right. And an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things, meaning fruit, right? The wisdom and the imaginations upon the earth and actions and works. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. That's why I say he chose through the foolishness of preaching. It's about testimony, man. Your testimony is supposed to be of your house shot. All right, as Paul's testimony was. All right. And you teach others that can do the same. All right, now I'm gonna end up with this, man. Um uh, this is John 17 and 33 and this is life eternal that they might know thee the only true power and Yahweh Shai whom thou hast sent man alright Yahweh he sent Yahweh Shai so we're supposed to know him and that's what I'm hoping this lesson will help anybody do that, that uh, does not know him or to help uh, shed light on his uh, uh, spirit of truth and the and the word, all right, edification and encouragement to any brothers out there and sisters. I have glorified thee on the earth. 
I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self. This is Yahusha. With the glory which I had with thee before the world was. So Yahusha was with Yahweh in the beginning. All right. So he's saying basically take him back to the spirit room. But this time he's going to be glorified in a new body. All right. Uh, he, he, uh, being glorified in the heavens, according to Revelation chapter 5. Um, all right. I have manifested thy name, right? His name, unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. So that's only for the elect. And who did he give them out of the world? Out of the children of Israel, he gave, as I read earlier, in Revelation 7, 144,000 and one third. All right. The first fruits. Um, I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Right, and that's what I read in uh, Second Ezra, where it said, "These have uh, stood so stiffly for the name of the Lord, All right, and for His word." Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee, all right, in spirit and truth. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, prophecy, and they have received them, all right, the elect receive it. He said the elect going to um, praise his name. And have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. I pray for them, I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. So this is who he's talking about. Where he said the one that uh, call on his name, I right, shall be saved. All right. And all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in thee. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thy own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are one. Right. Calling on Yahweh Shah's name in one mindset in this truth. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. So he, when Yahweh Shah was with us, he kept us in Yahweh's name and in his truth and in the spirit. So today we keep, he's using us to keep you people, you believers in, in each other all right, and, and ourselves uh, in the spirit of truth until the end. All right. And, and believe in Yahweh Bashem Yahusha until the end. Uh, and none of them is lost but the son of perdition. And it's talking about uh, Judas. And in these times, two thirds represent that spirit of Judas. That the scripture might be fulfilled, right? That they, they're they going to be destroyed and brought back uh, in the kingdom. All right. Um, so I'm going to stop it there, man. I, uh, matter of fact, I'm going to go a little bit more. Uh, verse 14 oh, 13 and now come I to thee and these things I speak in the world that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves All right, and, and we've, we've you can feel that spirit of uh, joy as we get closer to the end and you see the prophecies and you realize what side you're on if you know if you've been walking on the right side I have given them thy word and the world have hated them you see the world, it's a lot of people. Because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou should take them out of the world, but that thou should keep keep them, meaning protect them, watch over them, shamar, keep them from the evil. All right? Keep them from the wickedness. And how is he doing that? The word to be kept is also to what? To sanctify, to separate. All right? Uh, keep you from the wickedness, the dark. Uh, lies, deception, and worldly wisdom. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. See, he just said that. All right? That's what separates us, man, this truth. All right? Thy word is truth. All right? And it's, it has no small difference when it's spoken in its own language, which is Paleo-Hebrew or Proto-Hebrew. All right? It says, as thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself 
that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Wow, man. Neither pray I for these alone, but for those, for, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. So believe in what we're saying. All right. So if you believe, then the Lord um, is praying for you in the heavens and he, he receives your prayers that they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us. All right, and Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, that's that kills your holy trinity. All right, because we're sons of Yahweh as well, if we believe in that spirit of truth, all right, which, um, which is sent from, sent out from Yahweh to Yahweh Shai and, and upon them, uh, uh, his, his uh, children. Um, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. All right. It says, and the glory which thou gavest me. I have given them that they may be one, even as we are one. This is Revelations 3 and 8. I know thy works. So the Lord knows, man. He knows what you, you, you're down here doing. Either you're being wicked or if you're being righteous, all right, according to his will. Who you believe in, all right? Um, that's why if you're sitting at a table with people and they say the wrong names and all these false names, you say it loudly or within yourself. We ought to praise you. How about Shimei was shy? All right, you, you get up from that table. But um, I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door. And Yahweh Shai said, he's the door. He's the way, the truth, and the life. All right, he's the open door. And no man can shut it. All right, for thou hast a little strength and has kept my word and has not denied my name. 